What is going on everybody and I hope you're enjoying your Friday evening so far. This is MYG Jeffy T 3285 and I'm just here to recap some of the news, notes, rumors as well as a preview of WWE Smackdown tonight 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Now one of the rumors going around so far is what is the status of Paul Heyman and when are we going to be expecting Paul Heyman to make his return back to television. Now we all know on late July during SummerSlam, Paul Heyman ended up taking a devastating F5 through the announce table courtesy of Brock Lesnar towards the end of the matchup of the Universal Championship match in a no holds barred matchup against, Brock Le against Roman Reigns that night. And pretty much Bro uh, Paul Heyman has not been seen on television since he sustained that F5 at SummerSlam. Well, the reason why WWE has not brought Heyman back to television is because they want him to sell those injuries that he sustained in that matchup from Brock Lesnar during the Universal Championship match. And they felt like it would be a, a, not a good way to bring back Heyman too soon. And they want him to try to sell off those injuries as much as possible to get some more heat on him as well as Roman Reigns and to make Brock Lesnar look a little bit tougher after what happened at that match. But... There is a possibility that Heyman could be making his return sometime soon in the future, and we could even possibly see him return maybe as soon as Clash at the Castle during the Universal Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. As Lesnar, as a Heyman, is expected to make his return soon enough, and we have to wonder what his role is going to be when he eventually makes his return and how we might be able to assist the bloodline and Roman Reigns going forward for the championship match. So that's going to be an intriguing storyline to see is when is Paul Heyman going to be making his return? When is he going to be making his return to television? And what is he going to do to help out the Tribal Chief potentially keep his championship even longer than the days he's already had it coming over before? Now some of the other rumors that have been going around is that recently... Wade Barrett, one of the commentators who was brought back to the WWE back in 2020, who has been known as a, he's been announcing part of the announce team for the NXT brand since 2020. Well, it has been recently reported that Wade Barrett has just signed a contract extension with the WWE for the foreseeable future, so the WWE has locked up. Wade Barrett to a long-term deal to be part of the NXT commentary table where he's been doing a good job over there with Vic Joseph since he was brought back to the company back in 2020. So I think that's a very good sign and a very good job by WWE to be able to bring back Wade Barrett to a long-term deal because he's doing a great job in terms of being a heel commentator for that brand. And I think it's just an essential to be able to keep him around as he is brings on that heel heat. He's able to build up some of the heels on there. He makes believable when it comes to his commentary, and he's one of the best things to listen to, not only in NXT, but in WWE overall with his commentary that he's able to do. So that's just a very good job, very good job by the WWE to be able to bring back Wade Barrett to a long-term deal and keep him in the WWE for the foreseeable future. As now you're going to be able to hear his commentary going forward, and who knows, if something aligns pretty correct, pretty decently, maybe you might see a potential return to the ring for Wade Barrett going forward. Now some of the other news and notes that have been going around the WWE as well is, Jeff Jarrett, who has recently departed from the WWE after he was named part of the special live events coordinator of the WWE when Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard brought them back recently, he actually was doing a very good job at the job as WWE recently saw a major increase at live events because of Jeff Jarrett and most would have wondered and thought of that it was Triple H and his staff that brought in Jeff Jarrett originally back in the company last year, late last year. In fact, it was actually Bruce Prichard and Vince McMahon that ended up bringing back Jeff Jarrett to the company and he has been actually been doing an excellent job in terms of increase revenue when it comes to live events that have been happening from late 2021 till present day but as we all know WWE has recently let Jeff Jarrett go and they've had Road Dog Jesse James come in and he's been taking over that position as the head of co head coordinator of live events for the WWE going forward and we have to think that the reason that is happening is because Road Dog is obviously a Triple H guy he was part of Triple H's team when it came to creative and everything going forward so we have to think that because 
Jeff Jarrett was more of a Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard guy that they wanted to let him go and bring in their own guy, Road Dog, going forward for the WWE. So that's the reason why Jeff Jarrett has not been brought back, as was not brought back to the company, and why Road Dog is taking over his spot as the head and lead of create of uh, live events when it comes to coordination of that. And you have to think. Maybe what maybe wasn't the best idea to let Jeff Jarrett go, even though he wasn't a handpicked guy by Triple H. But Jeff Jarrett was doing a fantastic job in terms of boosting up the revenue and boosting up the sales and boosting up the interest when it came to the live events for the WWE, as they did see an incredible increase in that department. And you have to wonder if maybe Road Dog is going to be able to do the same going forward for the WWE and see what he can do. You know, in that position, taking over for Jeff Jarrett going forward. So, that's an interesting thing to see that Jeff Jarrett was doing such a fantastic job in terms of the increased revenue, the increased buy rates, and the increased interest when it came to the live events going on with the WWE and why WWE did not try to bring uh, Jeff Jarrett back. But as we all know, everybody wants their own guys when, and when, it, came, when it comes to, like, you know, what they want to have in their company and obviously Triple H just feels that Road Dog is in better position to help keep or maybe even increase even more what Jeff Jarrett did in terms of live events going forward so now in some of the other news that we're gonna see is as there are possible promotions going on for the WWE are we about to see some of the NXT wrestlers make their possible promotions to the WWE main roster in the coming days weeks and months now we did see on this past NXT show that Santos Escobar, as we know, lost his matchup against Tony D'Angelo in an anything goes street fight uh, to determine if Santos Escobar lost that match that he would be banned from WWE NXT going forward. And that is in fact what ended up happening is Santos Escobar ended up losing his matchup against Tony D'Angelo as he and he is in fact no longer allowed on NXT television going forward. Well, as we saw in this past Tuesday episode of NXT, Santos Escobar ended up making his return to television while the rest of Legado del Fantasma was exiting through the back door of the arena. And Santos Escobar pretty much picked up his group and brought and took them away in an SUV, essentially pretty much signaling that maybe the entire Legado del Fantasma group is going to be on their way to Raw or SmackDown in the coming days or weeks. That is in fact the case, as it looks like Triple H and his creative staff look like that they're going to be moving Santos Escobar and his entire Legado del Fantasma group up to the main roster as a collective unit going forward. So that's the best thing going forward, as I think that Legado would have been a little bit lost in the shuffle when it comes to, you know, staying in NXT by themselves without Santos there. So I think it's the best thing interest, best interest of all those parties, bringing the entire group back up to the uh, back to the main roster going forward some other names that have been thrown out there as potential people that could be called up to the main roster another thing that we saw this past uh, Tuesday was Indy Hartwell cut a heartfelt promo about the fact that she feels feels lost she just feels like she has no direction right now going on in WWE after uh, she's been losing and after she's been separated from the way as well as Dexter Loomis well as we saw on WWE this past Tuesday on NXT Dexter Loomis ended up making his return to WWE NXT, and it looks like that WWE might be interested in bringing up Indy Hartwell and maybe reuniting her with Dexter Loomis on the main roster because of the fact that Indy Hartwell really has nothing she's doing right now in terms of the NXT roster, and maybe if you throw her back up there, with the fact you have now... Austin Theory there on the main roster, and obviously because you have Johnny Gargano there and potentially the impending return of Candice LeRae on the main roster, and obviously with Dexter Loomis lurking around in this storyline he's got going on with AJ Styles and The Miz, maybe you'll have Indy Hartwell get called up to the main roster and input insert herself into the equation with Dexter Loomis and, and re, reunite, of course, on the main roster index going forward. I think it'd be the best thing and it would give Indy Hartwell some direction on the main roster going forward. So I think this is the best thing for them. And obviously we've been hearing a lot of rumors about potentially Solo Sokoa, who right now is out nursing a PCL sprain, uh, that he might be inclined to make a jump to the main roster after he made his, after he had a big time win a couple of weeks ago on NXT over Von Wagner and an anything goes street fight. But it looks like that the 
the NXT Street Thug might be on his way to the WWE main roster and a possible potential uniting with his with his brothers as well as cousin on the NXT main roster with the bloodline. I mean the WWE main roster with the bloodline. So look out for potentially Solo Sokoa making his impending roster main roster debut on main on a SmackDown or Raw. So just be on the lookout for that. That Solo Sokoa might be on his way to the main roster. So that's just a couple of names that you might be seeing on their way to the main roster going forward for the WWE. Solo Sokoa, Indy Hartwell, as well as Legato Del Fantasma. And some other names that you might be seeing make their way to the WWE main roster going forward. And we also know about some of the other returns that possibly could be making their way to WWE. As I made in my short of it did a couple of days ago, it looks like WWE might be bringing back Jonah, a.k.a. Bronson Reed, to the, to the WWE. As he's right now been participating with New Japan Pro Wrestling. It was just recently part of the G1 Classic over there in New Japan. But it looks like the WWE and Triple H has recently brought, reached out to try to see if they can bring back Jonah a.k.a. Bronson Reed, back to the WWE. And I think that would be a big-time addition to the WWE, as he was showing something as a former NXT North American champion. I think he would be definitely some good, solid depth on the main roster as a big guy who can, you know, make some, who can fly off the top rope, as we all know about his big-time finisher, the Tsunami Splash. Ju Jonah, uh, Bronson, Reed, Bronson Reed has a lot to show this main roster and to the WWE going forward. And he could show a lot to this audience. I think he'd be a welcome addition to the WWE going forward. And of course some of the previews of what you're going to be expecting on WWE Smackdown tonight. There's been some reports going around that JBL is going to be making his return to television on WWE. So he's been mainly been used on some of the pre-shows that have been going on for some of the pay-per-view pay events going on for NXT as well as the WWE main roster. And he's been on television sparingly from 2009 till present day. But I think it would be awesome to see what JBL is going to be doing when he makes his return to the WWE tonight during SmackDown. And another return that's going to be going on is Xavier Woods is expected to make his return to the WWE tonight after he was brutally attacked by the Viking, Raider, Viking Raiders a couple of days ago when they used a chair to bust up his ankle. So we have to see what him and Kofi Kingston are going to do and what they're going to say in response to what the Viking Raiders have been doing to, to them and what type of plans we have for the new day, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston going forward against the Viking Raiders. And some of the other things that you're going to be t potentially seeing on the show tonight is we're going to be seeing Ricochet be taking on Happy Corbin on a one-on-one -on -one matchup on WWE SmackDown tonight, as well as a second chance Fatal 4-Way matchup in the WWE Women's ta Tag Team Tournament to see who's going to be taking on Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez in the semifinals of the Women's Tag Team Tournament on the SmackDown side, as we're going to be having Dana Brooke and Tamina versus Zia Lee and Shotzi Blackheart, versus Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop, versus Natalia and Sonya Deville. That's going to be some of the things happening on SmackDown, as well as what is, Cappy, what is uh, Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns going to continue to do? Are we going to have more of a build-up for the WWE, women, uh, WWE Universal Championship match going on at Clash of the Castle next Saturday, as well as... What are we going to see with Sheamus and Gunther as they build up their matchup at Clash of the Castle for the WWE Intercontinental Championship? Also, what is Liv Morgan and, and Shayna Baszler going to have to say for the women's chip, WWE SmackDown Women's Championship leading into Clash at the Castle? As well as, what are we going to see uh, and uh, some of the other things we're going to be seeing tonight? And how is Ronda Rousey going to make her presence known? As she is still suspended and she is not expected to wrestle at the Clash of the Castle pay-per-view. But is she going to make a presence known on WWE SmackDown going forward? So that's just some of the news and notes that I wanted to give you guys for WWE for the news, notes, observations, injury updates, as well as rumors that have been going around the WWE this coming week, this, this week, as well as what you're going to be expecting on WWE SmackDown this coming fr tonight on WWE SmackDown on Fox. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like button below. Subscribe if you haven't already to NYG Jeffy T3285 for more breaking news updates, chatter, news, notes, and updates surrounding the WWE, as well as the New York Giants, Brooklyn Nets, New York Mets, and Food for Thought. 
turn on the bell for notifications and then when the next video or short are going to drop surrounding the WWE and let me know in the comment section what you think about some of the news and notes about some of the people being be called up to the main roster from NXT. Jonah possibly making her his return to the WWE, Bronson Reed. Some of the matchups and some of the things that are going to be seen on WWE SmackDown tonight. As well as some of the other news and notes that have been happening around the WWE. Let me know in the comment section what you think. So I hope everybody enjoys the rest of your Friday evening. Take it easy and let's see what the WWE has cooking for us tonight on Friday Night SmackDown.